everyone and welcome to today's video. Now today I am going to be looking at this album here. It's by Elvis Costello. It is called Imperial Bedroom. This album review was requested by a user called Nicholas Crow. So um so yeah, thank you very much right, for requesting this album review. Um today I'm going to give like a bit of background information about the album. Then I will show you my vinyl copy of it and then go over each of the album songs in detail. So this was um Elvis Costello's seventh studio album. Like this was like coming after um like a slight like left turn album um, Almost Blue, which was sort of like an album of like country covers very like unexpected like move like for like Costello to make however this was kind of at the start like of like a more sort of like mellower and um, more like serious by like, Elvis Costello this album was also produced by like a different producer than like who like normally like works with like Elvis Costello and um, like his first five albums were all produced by a guy called Nick Lowe however like on this release like he used like ex Beatles engineer Jeff Emmerich and um, while like, Emmerich was also like working on like Paul McCartney's Tug of War album like he was um, doing this like with Costello and actually like that's like where like um, McCartney and like Costello first met like it was when like they were both recording um like their like respected albums like in like air studios like they both met and like had like the idea like of like forming like a writing partnership um like way back like here like in 1982 so yeah, when the album was released, like it was very well received. Like it was marketed like by like the record company like as a masterpiece. Basically, like the billboard like saw like advertisement for this was basically just like a picture like off like the album cover like with like the word masterpiece like written next to it like with a question mark on it. it was also received like very very well. It rated album of the year for Village Voice magazine. Like also got like five star reviews like in like Rolling Stone and Uncut magazine. And um, was ranked 98th album of all time. Um, like in 1998 by Q Magazine. However, some people felt that like, the album concentrated too much on like different techniques like on writing and like less about sort of like material um, like on this album. It had mixed fortunes commercially like as well. Like it had done um, quite good reaching number six in the UK and um, albums charts. However, all of the singles from this um, pretty much failed to chart. Okay, so now I'm going to go over the album um, cover here, like the vinyl copy, what I have off it. Um, so I'll just start with the cover, which itself is a um, painting, like, um, painting, like, let me get this right, it's called Snake Charmer and the Reclining Octopus by, like, a guy called Barney Bubbles, sort of like a pasté on, like, um, Picasso's, like, artwork. It's a bit weird for, like, an album cover, like, I have to say. Um, there's a spine and, and, like, there's a back there, um, chat listing and, like, some rather moody looking Elvis Costello and the attractions like on the back there. Inside here um, my copy sort of comes with like an inner sleeve here which is a bit of a poor design I have to say. It is basically just like the lyrics but like no like punctuation, no sort of like song titles, just literally just written like in like block capitals. Really like hard to follow just like just like quite stupid that I think and um, and then the record comes in like it's sort of like own like in a sleeve here and um, which yeah like WH Smith this is like sort of like this one like didn't come like with the original record and like again we've just got this kind of like in a um, we've got this sort of like label there custom label and then on here sort of like a continuation off like off like the lyrics from the inner sleeve Okay, so now I'm going to go over each of the album songs. There's 15 tracks in total on this album. So, so yeah, what I'll do is like, I will give um, each song a score out of 10, and then those scores will be used to give us a overall percentage marking for the album. Okay, so it starts off with the track Beyond Belief, which is a really um, interesting song, like I'll say. It's got quite a sort of like a tense, like musical like arrangement to it. But like in some ways for me, like the actual like tune like doesn't quite fit like the music. Like there's like not very much like connection that like, between like kind of like the melody like off like the song like and like the backing. Like it's quite like disorientating like in some ways. Like, I mean like it's a very interesting track, but like it's never been like among like my favourite like Costello songs songs yeah like really like i'm not a massive fan of this track like if i'm being honest second track up is called tears before bedtime which i do quite enjoy and um, this one like rocks on quite nicely quite sort of like a soft slightly slower pace but like it does like move like as like a song like it is like quite good and um, 
really like the vocals on like the chorus as well. Just got really like sort of like warm sound to this track. Yeah, like I do quite like this one. Then we get a track called um, Shabby Doll, which I'm not huge on this song here. It starts quite um quite quiet, quite sort of plain in that, but all like the arrangement like, does build up like as like the song goes on, like a little bit basic like lyrically and like does get quite boring like after like a while. Like this one like is about five minutes plus this track here. Um, and like um like I like yeah like I just think like the chorus like it is like a bit weak. Like I don't really get like the point of the song to be honest with you. And then like at like the end of like, the song we get like these sort of like screaming like backing vocals coming in. Like it just really doesn't work for me. Like a little bit messy song and um, personally shabby doll. Then that's followed up with a song called The Long Honeymoon, which is a um, more kind of like downbeat, like jazzy number. We've got a bit of like accordion, like coming in, like on like this song, like sort of showing like Costello widening like his musical palette. Um, like it is like a pleasant track, a little bit forgettable though, and like slightly like overblown production, like especially towards the end of this song for me. Um, so yeah, not a bad song, but like yeah, like a little bit forgettable. And then we get um, what is probably the standout song on the album for me, Man Out of Time. Now this one, like, really interesting song here because it starts off very loud, very sort of like these loud, very punkish like guitars to open the song. Um, but like, then like, it changes direction completely, fall at like, the bulk of the track, and like it's only during and like it's only during like the outro of the track that like, where it like returns like to like slightly like louder um, section like of it. Like apparently like the bit what like so like bookends like this song like was like the original original demo um like off like the track like which I decided like to tag on and um, that can be like a unique thing to do but like it doesn't quite work for me like the actual main bulk of the song though I think like is really great really melodic track really nice lyrics so personally I do find the production to be a little bit um like cluttered like on the song like lots of different textures to this on here but they just don't quite work for me like a little bit um slightly messy like like jeff emmerich like he's a great like engineer like he more than proved that like with like his work like with the beatles but for me like as like a sole producer like on on and um, um, like on this album like some of like his like choices they do seem like a little bit like weak to me this was one of the singles from the album and like yeah didn't do very well at all only reached number 58 on the uk charts like should have done like a lot better than that because i do think it is a really really great song it's also like ranked among like the top 10 best tracks of 1982 by like enemy magazine like at the time so yeah like at least i could did get like some love um like as a song because i do think it is very very good Almost. Almost. The next number is called Almost Blue, which is another um, popular choice like from uh, the album. It like, appears like on like many Elvis Costello and um, Best of collections. It, um, and this one like also shares like his title like with like his like last album, like which was like the country covers album. Um, but for me, I find the song quite boring, and like Costello's vocals a little bit weaker like on this one. Like he sounds very detached, like and like slightly strained like in places as well. Thankfully, the thankfully this song like passes quickly. Like it's less than three minutes long. Like it's just kind of like there and gone really. Um, but yeah, like not a brilliant track though. Unfortunately for me, although like I know for many people this is like one of like the standout songs like of like Costello's career. In every home there will be lots of time They say they're very And then we get another favourite track of mine to close side one and in every home which is a very very well produced very textured song but I think it really works like on this track quite Beatles-esque as well like lots of like strings like and like brass on it as well like quite like overblown but I do think it really works like a great chorus like as well like really catchy like this is like one of like the most um, catchy songs like one of like the only real catchy songs like like on like this album just like just yeah like a really pl pleasant track like to the years i have to say and in every home oh, 
And then side two starts quite well um, as well with um, a song called The Loved Ones, which is a more like upbeat, slightly like sort of like toe tapping song, like more like in tune like with like his previous like song songs like from like the late seventies. Yeah, like this track like could fit like quite well like on Get Happy or like My Aim Is True. The only thing I would say like I do think like the vocals they do get like a little bit um, fussy like the backing vocals. Like on like the chorus, I have like a bit like um too much like prominence, and like they don't quite work like with um, um like with like the lead vocal part. But it is a fine pop song like at like the end of the day, like the love ones. I do quite like it. Next one up on side two is called Human Hands, which is another um really good really solid song like giving it like an 8 out of 10 good sort of like funky like rhythm to it musically it is like a little bit forgettable but like when like you listen to it like it gets like your toe tapping like it is a um pretty good track like one like the better cuts like on side two then we get uh, another slightly weaker song called Kid About It which is another slower sort of more sort of jazzier song this one very much just passes by like without making like a like impression there's no like real like melody to it like it is just like sort of like a mess song really like i don't really care about this track like at all um five out of ten the next song is called little savage which i think is um also okay like i mean it starts off like with like this nice sort of like organ part like to open up like the song like it does pick up the album like a little bit more like upbeat this track like the band like the attractions playing really really like well on it like especially bassist like bruce thomas but like again a like forgettable song like it's quite weak like melodically and like yeah like it's just one what doesn't like stick in your head like i don't really have have like much like off like a sort of like recollection like off like what this song like goes like you swore you wouldn't shout if it's not your fault and now the next one is called um boy with a problem which is another um piano based like slightly slower song and um, this one like interestingly features Linux by Squeezes and um, Chris Difford. Like this would be like the second time like a member like of Squeeze that like, worked like on like a like Elvis Costello album like Glenn Tilbrook sang on the Trust album. This one here like differs like writing like the lyrics to this song and um, sort of like lyrically like about like teenage angst but it lacks any of that in like the musical like arrangement which is just very boring and um, very like average song like at best like again like I can only really give this like a 5 out of 10. And then we get another song that doesn't do too much for me. It's called Pid Pigeon English, spelled like slightly like weirdly, not like pigeon, like pigeon, um, sort of thing. Like, yeah, like not too sure like what this song's like about. Like really, like it doesn't do like all that much for me. Like starts like like with these like sort of, like simple like acoustic sounds, but then like it does go in like other like directions. Got like this sort of like stop start like structure to it. What um, what like, I just don't think like really works. I think it makes it quite messy and like lack like any cohesion yeah like it's a song that gets like a little bit like darker then like it suddenly changes like it's light again then like dark again like it's just a bit of a mess for me okay the next song up is the penultimate track on the album it's called you little fool which i'm giving a 7 out of 10 so this is like a good enough song like it's not quite as strong like melodically um but like the chorus though like it is like pretty catchy like sort of like the line like you little fool um like that's like quite like a catchy like line and like it's interesting like musically like as well like we get like this sort of like nice hearty chord in it and like also like um like this sort of like this flanging like on it as well kind of like a sort of like a 60s throwback sound like reminds me like a bit of like the small faces ichiku park yeah but like that chorus line like it is a tad like annoying like after like a while like they keep like going back to that and like it does get like a little bit like monotonous very sort of like layered vocals on it like kind of sort of like, this echo effect on it yeah like it's not like too great for me that for me like the first single from the album like as well only reached number 52 in the uk charts which was very like disappointing like coming after um like coming after like his song like good year for the roses like from like the almost blue album which was seen like as like almost like a comeback single and then we close the album with a song called um town crier which is another sort of like okay track 
like it's a little bit basic like lyrically like using like the English tradition like off like a town crier like you would like sort of like deliver like the news like off like the data like the people like off like the town like before there was like sort of TV like and like newspapers and that I kind of like using that like as like an image like off like crying and like being sad and that and um, for me, like, it is, like, um, musically quite nice, like, with, like, a nice, sort of, like, orchestra, like, backing up, like, Costello with a song. Just not very interesting, though, like, as, like, a song, like, both lyrically, like, both lyrically, like, and, like, musically, yeah, just, like, this is, like, a little bit disappointing to finish. Okay, so overall, this album would score 71%. So yeah, a mixed bag here. Some tracks I really, really like, such as Man Out of Time, and um, like I did Every Home, The Loved Ones. Yeah, for me, like those are like the highlights. But then like there is like a lot of material what just like really, what just really like doesn't do like much for me. Like it's kind of like after like Almost Blue, like from like the year previous, like Costello, um, Lost some of like, lost some of his like initial smart spark. Like he was making like a lot more like sophisticated music, but like it was a lot more boring. Like and like a lot less sat satisfying than his first four albums. Like, even like the back cover, like as I said, they all look completely bored, like out of like their minds. And like that's kind of like what I'm like when like I listen to this. It's just like a lot of songs that just like meander on like on this album and like it's maybe like one of like, these things that when like this is like a more like mature like sort of like grown up album like not sort of like made like for like 19 year olds like to listen to like that's maybe like well like I'm like a lot more drawn to like his like late 70s like new wave stuff however for me this is like at like the moment like anyway um, like an overrated album like the melodies like don't stick in like your head it really misses the energy and drive like of his first four albums and like even like some like the ones like afterwards, like I probably like do prefer like King of America and like Punch the Clock and Spike. Like I think that like all of those like are like solid albums. But for me, like this one, like is a bit hit and miss. So yeah, I hope you have enjoyed this review. Like I would like to know what you think of this al album like, down below. Like in like the comments, like I'm sure that like, like there will be some people like who strongly like disagree with me like on this. But yeah, like I would like to know like what you like, you think like anyway. Like also if like you have like any requests for future album reviews, please do leave them down below. And I will see you all next time for the next video. Goodbye.